Hi everybody, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection and uh, Central Digger Supply. Coming to you with a video a little bit different. We're getting away from the mini excavators for a moment. We're going to talk about a product that's starting to become more popular, and I wanted to get out and, and check out what's going on with it. So we're going to talk today about these little mini skid steers that seem to be flooding the auctions and, uh, and whatnot, and incidentally, Facebook Marketplace. Um, so we're going to we're going to go around. We're going to talk about it because uh, I know a lot of people are curious about if if this is a better fit for a homeowner versus the Mini X. All right. So stay tuned for more. All right. So I was on proxy bids and I uh, got a little carried away and ended up owning uh, two of these lovely mini skid steers that you see here. Um, so I'm going to talk about kind of what the what this one specifically is and then the overall kind of theme of these mini skid steers. Um, this one happens to be by a company called Rota. Um, let's be honest, we know it's not from that company. It's built by somebody else. But this one is a Rota and it's an RD380L, whatever that means. Um, and and I, got it, uh, I got it for four grand plus auction fees. So 4,400 and that's what it owes me. Um, this unit is obviously a tracked unit, and this one happens to have the smaller engine. So it's got the little 420 cc uh, Rado engine, uh, as opposed to a V twin. I think it's like a 739 or something like that. Um, but you know, overall, uh, first impressions. Kind of when I when I picked it up, I was I was very impressed by the quality here. Um, and it's substantially bigger than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I know obviously it's not like a bobcat mt whatever um but it is it's got a you know it's fairly good size it's robust it's heavy as hell um so we're going to talk about a couple of the features that that you know this machine has and and kind of uh what what sets it apart from some of the more entry level ones okay so coming around the front of the unit uh the first thing that's going to be very apparent to you is the fact that we have a hookup for auxiliary hydraulics or an attachment um, and you might be wondering why are the three, okay? We got two pressure lines and then we have the case drain line. The case drain is something that is used on some attachments. Uh, it allows a, uh, basically an, uh, an unpressurized venting of the attachment back to the hydraulic tank. Um, this is nice, okay? Not all of them have this. Some of them, if you order them, you have to order it with the aux hydraulics. That's pretty nice to be on this kind of an entry level machine. The other thing we see down here is the quick attach setup. Okay, now not all of these have quick attach, and most importantly, some of the other models they don't have a Toro Dingo quick attach. Some of them, I think the Digit, uh, it has like a proprietary quick attach that doesn't apparently doesn't fit anything else. Um, this one's Toro Dingo. So you pull the pins, you can take the bucket off. I got a set of pallet forks with it. You know, you slap those on. Um, admittedly, that's pretty nice to have this. Now, another great feature, or actually a couple of great features on this particular unit. One of them is the fact that the drive motors are up high. Okay, I like that. Some of these have it down, down the bottom there. Um, you know, it's more to hit, more to get in the way. So I kind of like that, that this is up top. The other thing I like is underneath this plate, it contains the track tensioner. And some of these units have a grease track tensioner. So it's just a cylinder, you fill it with grease, and that's what does your track adjustment. Um, obviously, with the grease being non-compressible, you would think that the more you, you know, the more you put in there, the more it's going to stress the track out. What we're finding, though, is that the grease ends up leaking out. And then that doesn't really do any good. So this one has an old school thread up underneath here. You just adjust it, tighten it down. You carry on about your day. Life is good. Um, the other thing about this machine, and we're starting to see some of the other units make a big stink about this. Down the bottom, the, the pivot wheels, the idler wheels, whatever you want to call them. This one has three. Everybody says, oh, my God, three is not enough. What are you talking about? That's crazy. Well, think about this. You got a wheel back here. The distance between here and here is not that great. So you already got an idler back here. You got one here, one here, one here. And then what looks like a gap in the front is not because obviously you got the bigger front wheel. So 
this machine doesn't have a large gap between the idlers on the bottom that's going to allow the track to flex up and maybe start to hit this. So that's pretty nice for something on this kind of entry level. So most of these units, if not all, come with a, uh, an actual proper sized hydraulic cooler. Uh, and the nice thing about this one is it's got a fan on the back of it. Huh. Many excavator owners be jealous. All right. Now, inside here, uh, inside of the actual inner workings, we're going to do some component ID. So we have the hydraulic tank down here. Okay. And we've got the pumps, just like uh, most of the other machines of this caliber. Now, this one's going to be a dual pump. Okay. Some of them have three pumps. This one's only got two. We've got a single suction line. And then it splits off, and one of these lines runs up to the, the control valve for the left track. The other one runs up to the control valve for the right track, okay? Uh, other than that, nice things about these units. Also, we're going to have a return filter, okay, as this goes back in, coming in from our hydraulic cooler. Right before it gets back to the tank, we're going to hit it with a filter, all right? Now, the engine is mounted uh, over in the back there. Obviously, like I said, this is a single cylinder unit. Then we also have this third valve up here. This is going to be the control valve for your auxiliary hydraulics that run down the arm. Okay. Now, coming around to where the engine is, we've got a battery switch right here. Obviously, our, our very familiar Rado uh, single cylinder gasoline engine. And then up here, we can see the DCVs that control all of our functions. Now, a nice part about this machine, which is, is different than some of these other machines, this one is a direct control, so there are no pilot controls. So by the movement of the right stick, I am directly acting on the DCV up there that you can't really see right now, but I'm directly acting on it. All right. Uh, same thing on this side. So... On one of these machines, forward back on the left track, forward back on the right track, this side is going to operate the, the big lift, okay? And then this one's going to do the tilt bucket. So if you wanted to curl the bucket and lift at the same time, you would essentially move this one over this way, and you take this one, move over this way. If you wanted to dump and dump, that'd be what you would do. And then if you want to operate your um, auxiliary functions, they're right here. The control area is very well laid out. All right, we got a horn button here. Do with that what you want. We have a fan switch and we got the light switch. So you can leave that on if you notice your oil temperature starts to increase. Um, or, you know, if it's winter, you go ahead and shut it off. You know, uh, beyond that, the unit is, is pretty much, it's very straightforward, this thing. You know, we got a nice foot pedal here that folds up to stand on. It's kind of nice. They throw a nice little gas piston on there for you. The underside of it is extremely simple. We got the battery mounted down there. The engine mounts on this nice plate with these rubber isolators. So, I mean, all in all, I would say it's a pretty well-made unit. I mean, I'm, I was very impressed when, uh, when I stumbled across this and ended up, you know, loaded it on the trailer. I want to say it'll lift somewhere around 800 pounds. You know, do with that number what you like. Um, I'm sure it will lift 800 pounds if you weigh 300 pounds, okay? I've almost flipped it over twice. So, you know, use extreme caution. Now let's talk about the difference between this machine and some of the other ones you see. So obviously the engines, okay? So you can get these things with Briggs & Stratton motors. You can get them with the Rado engine. You can get them with twin cylinder, single cylinder, whatever you want. Three pump, two pump million different uh, things out there. Do I think that a machine this big needs the V-twin motor? No. This little one longer, from the things that I've done with it, the engine's not the limiting factor, all right? It's the weight that's the limiting factor. So, you know, if you feel that you need the twin cylinder, okay, I guess so. But beyond that, if you're a little hesitant about maybe getting a one cylinder versus a two cylinder and you only have a single one near you, um, I wouldn't shy away from it. It doesn't, doesn't seem like it's going to be that big of a deal. Plus, if it blows up, it's like half as expensive to go to Harbor Freight and get another one. All right. The other main difference uh, between this particular unit and some of the other ones you're going to see out there is the two-pump, three-pump thing. Um, 
you know, if you're buying it specifically to use what I would consider to be a high flow attachment, so brush cutter, rototiller, um, an auger, not really, but something where you're going to be moving and trying to use the attachment at the same time, I would recommend definitely getting a three pump unit because the way that this is set up, the hydraulics flow to the track controls first, then to the auxiliary attachment. So if you're doing any sort of movement, you're going to use up your fluid power moving the tracks, and it's not going to be directed towards that attachment. So if you're looking to you know, do something like that, again, stick with that three-pump unit. Uh, the other thing that's going to be a lot of big differences with this particular unit is the width. Um, this one happens to be right at 37 wide. Uh, so, you know, great. Some of them are wider. Some of them are narrower. You see some of them, they're really, really kind of tiny. Um, and that is, you know, a good or a bad thing, depending on, again, your specific use for the machine. If you're going to be lifting really heavy loads, uh, I would obviously recommend going with a longer, wider one. If you're just messing around in the backyard, that's fine. The big debate. Tires, tracks. This is a probably where most people kind of butt heads. Um, I don't know whether tires are better or worse. I can only speak from what I get from other people. What is told to me is that the tire units, they're less of a headache, but they're much tippier, okay? And they don't push as hard. Some people also talk about durability issues because when you use the tire units, you have a chain drive setup that's actually driving both of the wheels. So you got a hydraulic motor driving one, it transfers the power to a chain, and that drives the next one. Where with a track setup, you don't have that. You just have the one drive motor, spins the track, life is good. Um, the ease of maintenance stuff, when it comes to, obviously, you're not going to tighten up tires, right? So that's a, that's a plus. Um, and, you know, maybe with a downside of maybe you pop a, a tire off a rim or something like that. So, you know, I can't really speak to which one is, is better or worse. It's just sort of what you feel is the best fit for you. I will say that the tire machines on average tend to be about a thousand bucks less, mostly because they're smaller. So. There we go. Um, so the last thing I want to touch on here is some of the upgrades that I think should be done to one of these if you're thinking about adding this to your fleet. So we're going to talk about a couple of those upgrades. So the first upgrade that you should strongly consider doing if you're looking to have a long-term relationship with this machine is do something about where the hoses and the tube fittings come through the body. Um, I noticed that a f quite a few of these are very, very close, if not hitting the orifices that come through the body of the machine. So I can imagine after a few hundred hours, you're going to start rubbing through hydraulic lines and you're going to have a hell of a mess to deal with. So if you buy one of these things, make sure you keep an eye on that. Same thing kind of goes for the hard lines up and down the arms. Um, if you're looking to, to you know, really have a long-term relationship with this, I would recommend trying to get some chafing protection on the arms of the machine. Uh, again, just to alleviate any headaches in the future. All right, now the other thing that absolutely needs to be addressed is going to be the lack of weight, okay? Um, you know, it's fun to mess around with this, but if you're looking to do any serious lifting, you need to strongly consider making friends with somebody with a plasma cutter and finding a way to get some half inch steel plates on the bottom of this thing and also attached to the bottom of your step guard. Okay, you need to, I mean, realistically, you gotta think about adding a couple hundred pounds down here. Maybe even concrete, I know that's not really that nice to do, or even attach some weights to the side plates of the machine here. Um, that's something that you strongly should consider. Doing. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about here, where this hydraulic cooler sits up against this, they've what they did what looks like they doubled up a bunch of weather seal that you get from like Home Depot. Um, and then obviously, you know, this thing, if I can get let me get it up off here. So this thing, as it folds down, it's going to sit right on there. I mean, granted, it's not sitting on much of it, but that, you know, that's you can hear it. That's not the way to do that. Um, so 
you know, just keep an eye out for this if you, if you buy one of these things and you're trying to make it live longer because that, you know, this thing ain't got but an hour on it and we're already starting to see some some issues with it getting into the weld there. So, I mean, other than that, it is pretty bulletproof uh, unit. It doesn't look like it's going to, doesn't look like it's going to fall apart anytime soon. Um, you know, so I do apologize for the, the gap in the videos. Um, it's been a very busy uh, few weeks here. We got a, we got a newborn. I'm getting promoted. We're moving to Florida. So a lot going on. Um, but I'm, I'm going to get back into this and, uh, and really, you know, keep, keep these videos coming because these are, these are one of those things. I think six, eight months from now, these are going to be the Kings and, and nobody's even going to remember what a QH 12 is. So for now, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection. I hope this video helped you out. Uh, and, um, you know, stand by for, for more. We we're hopefully going to use this machine or sell it. I don't know. Whatever one, whatever one they get. So stay on those projects.